Okay, we're going to discuss the RH blood group system. So the RH blood group system would have here the 003 ISBT classification number or the International Society for the Blood Transfusion classification number. So we consider here the RH blood group system here as second most important blood group system uh, after the APO blood group system. There's also consider here the second most immunogenic after your ABO blood group system. So our RH pertains here to the positive negative. Like for example, if you have okay the usual blood type natin, so that's okay A positive to so the A represent here the ABO blood group system, and your RH represent here the positive or the negative, and this pertains to the RH antigens. Okay, there are three RH antigen. We have here the D, the C, and the E antigens. So, most likely in the routine testing for your RH blood group. So, we are just testing for this one. Ito lang. Tinitest natin. The D antigen. That's why RHD. Ganun. So, like, if you are A positive, mean to say you are, okay, D positive. Thus, this is the uh, antigen for the RH that we are testing for that. So, are you, if you are positive, meaning to say you are D positive. If you are A negative, meaning to say that you are negative for the D antigen. Okay, so your RH blood group system, the antigen, the D, the C, and the E, okay, they are found in our RBC membrane as protein. But in the case of your AB or blood group system, those are your carbohydrates. But ito, ang kanyang antigen is the proteins. Okay, so there are approximately... 50 different antigenic specificities or approximately 57 the different antigens combination attributed or included in your RH blood group system making this one a very complex complicated na blood group system the complexity of the RH blood group system is highly dependent on the nomenclature and therefore we of giving assigning names to each of the RH antigens. So we have the fission rays, the also here the Weiner, the Rosenfield, and we have your ISBT classification number. Okay, another thing about the RH blood group system, the antibody here is the IgG antibody. So pag IgG antibody, most like this one, try to be implicated in your hemolytic transfusion reaction or even your hemolytic disease of the newborn if the mother's blood is not compatible with the baby's blood or the father's blood. Okay, so we have here the historical milestones with the discovery of the RH blood group system. First one, we have your okay, Levine and Stetson. Okay, try to identify the antibody from the obstetric patient, mean to say OB patient. So, ito yung patient natin ay nag-deliver ng baby. However, the baby is still birth or still born. I mean to say, patay. Okay, and apparently, this mother here, during the delivery of the baby, requires required a unit of the blood for the blood transfusion. And they selected the husband as the donor of the blood for the blood transfusion. So, although the mother and the husband or the father would have the same ABO blood growth system, but they noticed that after the blood transfusion, still hemolytic transfusion reaction occur. Why e, nagkaroon siya ng hemolytic transfusion reaction where in fact they are compatible with their ABO? And later on, they tried to postulate Levine Stetson, postulate here that there are other blood group system outside or other than the ABO blood group system. And that they body, they tried to isolate here Okay, uh, belongs to your anti-RH blood group system. So, nagkakaroon ng hemolytic transfusion reaction here because, again, the mother tried to possess antibody. Okay, that's in the form of your anti-RH, anti-RHD. Okay, so, we're in this one is directed towards RHD positive na antigen sa baby. So, ito si mother may anti-RHD, tapos si baby may RHD positive. Okay, so I mean to say the baby, try to assume here the RHD uh, antigen status of the father, which is D-positive ang father. Therefore, the baby is also D-positive for that. 
And since the mother tried to develop the anti-ID, antibody, so nagkaroon siya ng hemolytic transfusion reaction. Another one, Landsteiner and Weiner. On the other hand, I also here tried to identify it or tried to isolate an antibody, which has been produced here after the administration of the rhesus monkey, rhesus macaque monkey blood being given to the guinea pig and rabbits. So, they injected sila ng red cells sa guinea pig and rabbit, and the guinea pig and the rabbit tried to develop an antibody. And uh, according to Landstein and Weiner, they thought here that the antibody, they isolate as the same antibody na na-identify ni Levine Stetson. But later on, they found out that this antibody is not uh, the same. Okay, dito, ang antibody na produced dito, this pertains to your RH blood group. Ang antibody na produced dito is the anti-LW. Okay, pero ito pinangalanan nila ang RH from the rhesus monkey. But then again, ang antibody na produced dito with administration of the rhesus monkey blood become anti-LW. And this is different from your RH blood group system. Okay, now we go to the different uh, nomenclature under your RH blood group system. So, okay, the first nomenclature here does include the Fisher race, and we have also the winder would have the genetic basis. So, it will signify here that um, we try to inherit our RH antigens from particular genes. Okay, for this Fisher and race and winder. On the other hand, the third Nomenclature, we have here just denotes the absence, the present absence of your RH antigen. It does not have here the genetic basis. That's the Rosenfield nomenclature. And the fourth nomenclature here would be the international classification number. So we have the ISBT, International Society of Your Blood Transfusion. So it's an international organization where it try to give a number or designation to your RH antigens. Not only for the RH, antigen also try to give designation for each of the antigen in other blood group system. Okay, so first we discuss the fissure and race. For the fissure and race, the main cluster believe here that okay, this is the DCE terminology. Bakit, in, bakit DCE? Bakit in the CDE? Okay, so according to fissure and race here that the location of your C na gene Okay, it's primarily located in between ang D saka E. Kaya ang arrangement niya is DCE based on the location ng kanyang chromosome. Okay, or the gene, the chromosome where you could find the gene responsible for the production of your C na antigen. Dito siya sa gitna, that's why ang ating terminology when we try to assign for the efficient race na antigens, the DCE, hindi siya CDE. Okay, efficient race believe that there are two genes we try to control the production of your RH antigen. Again, ang RH antigen natin, there are three of that. We have the D, the C, and the E antigens. Okay, so the first gene is your RHD. Okay, the RHD na gene from the word itself, it try to code for the production of your D na antigen. Ang gene natin, pagkasulat nito ay naka-italicized, ang antigen natin, hindi siya naka-italicize. Okay, again, your RHD, ito ang kailangan natin para makapag-produce ka ng D antigen. Kung wala kang RHD, hindi ka rin makapag-produce ng D antigen. So, kung wala kang D antigen, either hindi siya nakala, nakasulat, hindi siya naka-indicate, or makakita ka ng smaller D. Smaller D denotes here the absence of your D antigen. Another gene we try to code here for the production of your RH antigen are your RHCE antigen or RHCE na gene. Okay, ito mga gene na to, so from the word self, so the RHC na malaki code here for the production of your C antigen. Okay, the C na maliit na gene is the one coding here for the production of your C na antigen na maliit. RHE For the bigger E and smaller E na gene, ito naman nagko-code ng production ng ating smaller E sa bigger E na mga antigens. So, according to fission race, for you to have here your RH antigen, dapat you need to have inherited here itong dalawa na gene, RHD na gene sa RHCE na gene in order for you to have this na genotype. 
For in order for you to have this different antigen na RH. So, the D, the C, and the E. Okay, so, according to vision rays then, our genotype, we try to inherit that one from our parents. Okay, uh, in a co-dominant allele. Pag sinabing co-dominant allele, so again, one set of your, isang set na ito, DCE, nakadepende lang kung malaki or maliit siya, you try to inherit that one from your mother. And then another set of that, to try to inherit here from your father. Okay? So like for example, kung ito, DCE, tapos sa DCE, okay, so like for example, itong genotype mo, so this one is from your mother, this one is from your father. Okay, so, like for this one, paano magiging, if this one is your genotype, ano magiging phenotype natin? So, notice here, heterozygous tayo sa D, sa malaki, sa maliit, still ang phenotype mo ay still positive ka pa din yan. Okay, about this one, so, ganun din, ganun din siya, so, heterozygous siya for the C, sa maliit, sa malaki, so, still, you could still express that one as your C na phenotype. Positive ka pa din. Same through this one. So, dalawa siyang malaki. So, again, if you try to test for each of your antigen with the corresponding na anti-sera, anti-D, anti-sera, anti-C, anti-sera, anti-E, anti-sera. So, ito lahat magpa-positive ka pa din. Because again, they are heterocycles for one is big, one is small, or pwapareho silang malaki. So, still, you're able to express that one as your phenotype. Okay, there's in the PowerPoint, there's a table for the frequencies or the prevalence of the different genotype. Okay, kindly refer for that. I just summarized na lang. So, among your black population, among your white population, the Native American, and among Asian, ang genotype na ito, so, D na malaki, C na malaki, E na maliit, would be the highest na prevalence. On the other hand, among black population, so, malaki na D, maliit na C, Palit na E. That's the most prevalent among your all your genotype for your RH. And then we have the shortcomings of your fission rays. So since uh, ang combination mo lang dito, DCE lang, ganyan kanyan. So pag may mga ma-discover na mga newer RH antigens because of the mutation, you could no longer assign anymore here for particular groupings or designation. Kasi wala na silang another combination for that. On the other hand, we have also here sometimes, okay, there will be mutation or there's a lot of effects where it try to delete the production of your particular antigens. Example for that, we have DE, so wala siyang, wala siyang C. Ito naman, DE, wala din siyang C. C, D, wala siyang E. Or dalawa, wala. D lang, pero meron sa kanya, wala siyang E, saka C. That's your double deletion. On the other hand, you could also have the genotype. We call it was your RH null. RH null is characterized here by wala kalat na DCE. Pag wala kalat, you call that one as your RH null. Another one, RH mode. RH mode here is just a weakened expression of your RH antigens. So, uh, weakened lang. Many people say that one, hindi siya ganun ka reactive pag nag -tab blood typing tayo. But then again, you could enhance the reactivity of that by performing your uh, indirect anti-globulin test. Okay, and uh, most likely pag mga weakened expressions, they are being typed as positive naman. Only that, they are expressing it in a weak, weak reaction lang then. Pero most likely they are still positive and you need to be very careful for that bago ka mag-release ng negative na results. Baka kasi mamiss mo ang reaction kasi weak ang kanyang reaction. You need to confirm always, pag nag-negative, ay wala siyang, ay negative siya for the D antigen or the C antigen. Okay, so dapat you need to confirm that one with your indirect anti-globulin test or your indirect Combs test. Okay, now we go to the next RH nomenclature. We have here the Weiner or the RHHR terminology. So the Weiner nomenclature, just like your <coughs> Fischer race, but also have here the genetic basis. Stating here that our RH antigens are actually derived from one, one RH gene. 
And one are its gene daw, it try to give rise to your several agglutinogen at it will eventually give rise here to several RH factors. So, this is a very complicated nanomenclature for your winer. So, just like this one, the R, the bigger R, represent your big letter D. Smaller R represent your smaller D. The number one, or prime, okay, that signifies a capital letter C or big letter C. A number two, or the double prime, signify here a big letter E. And the uh, superscript Y and Z, that will signify here that your C and the E are automatic capital or big letters. Example, so we have here the R1. So let the bigger R here, so, okay, that one, that's, okay, that's your capital letter or big letter D. And the one here, so, okay, that's capital letter C or big letter C. And then, um, since ito lang ang kanyang given, so we assume here that your E na antigen is ano siya, small. Mean to say, wala siyang E antigen. Another, another example, we have a small letter R and a double prime. Small letter R represent here this one. Okay, the double prime represent here the big letter E. So since ito lang given, so we assume here that C, wala siyang C, so we designate that one as small letter C. The R, Y, on the other hand, so R, the bigger R, represent here the big capital letter D. And the Y here represent, or the Z, kanya Y, that both your C and the E, okay, the C and the E are actually both here would be a big letter C. So this is your Fisher and race. This is your mga ganito designation. Okay, that's your Weiner. On the other hand, you could also have this one. If your R... Okay, R preceded the H. Mean to say, mas mo ng R kompara sa H with the indication of your single prime. Okay, it would denote here that your, your C is a big letter. If your R mo na sa H, mean to say, RH with the presence of your double prime, this one is your big letter E. However, pag ang H natin mo na sa, sa R with the presence of your single prime, it will signify a small letter C. If your H mauna sa R with the presence of your double prime, signify that your E is small letter. Example, we have the RH. So your R's, then we have also here H with the single prime. So R here, since malaki siya, so we are expecting that your D is your capital letter. Since your R preceded your H, R preceded your H with the presence of your, okay, double, a single prime, Single prime, so it would denote here that your C is a big letter and your E, since hindi siya naka-mention or naka-indicate, so automatic siya na small letter. How about this one? R preceded the H with the presence of your single prime. So since po R ay maliit, so maliit ang letter D natin. Since R natin preceded the H with single prime, so we expect here na maliit ang letter C. Since hindi naka-indicate ang okay, yung letter E, so automatic siya na small, the E. How about this one, RH with a double prime? Since R is small here, so small din letter D natin. And the double prime, R preceded the H with double prime. Ay, mali pala. Okay, ulit. Dito, if your R preceded the H with a single prime, since R natin is a small letter, so D natin is small letter then. Since your R preceded the H, R preceded the H with a single prime, so that's the big letter C, and automatic ang ating letter E is small letter for that. How about this one? If your R preceded the H with a double prime, since your R is small letter, we're expecting here that your D is also a small letter. Okay, about your C, since hindi naka-mention ang C, so automatic na small ang letter C. So this one is R preceded the H, with a double prime, so capital letter or big letter and letter E natin. On the other hand, you could also this one, RH, okay, with a single prime and RHR double prime. Okay, let your R here is a capital letter, so big letter and letter D natin. Since RH ito with a single prime, so this pertains to your, ayan, single prime, so this big letter C. And H, R, H preceded your R with a double prime. H preceded our double prime, so small letter. Okay, so that's how you try to convert your 
uh, basically your okay, your winer to your fisher and race, the main clutcher. Okay, we have your another example. So we have your RH. Okay, RH1. So itong kanyang aglutino dyan for this one. So RH. Okay, 1 here. So signify this uh, RH1. Okay, since hindi naka-indicate ang ating, uh, okay, your letter E na antigen. So, okay, so we're expecting the letter E natin ay maliit. So, that's your HR double prime. So, let RH, this one is like capital letter D because of this capital letter R. And we have your HR, RH with a single prime, so capital letter C. And your H preceded your R with a double prime, so this is equivalent to your small letter E. Okay, then another one, your fissure, you could also convert that one to your winer. So this is your DCE. Again, okay, so small letter C. Okay, that's your HR single prime. Because ito, and maliit ang R natin, so maliit ang D natin. Okay, then we have also here capital letter E. is malaki siya, so that's your RH double prime. So ito siya. Okay, so for your seat work, kindly convert this one, RH, RH, single prime, RH, double prime, to your fascia and race. So again, since ito ay, hindi na kainikita ang R natin, so smaller D, okay, ako na lang sasagot pala. Okay, about this one, RH, single prime, so R preceded the H with single prime, so that's your capital letter C. Okay, about this one, RH, Double prime, so R preceded the H with a double prime, so capital letter, big letter E natin. Okay, but it's one, RH, single prime, saka HR double prime. So R natin is malaki for that letter D. Okay, H, R, H, so preceded by this R, preceded the H with a single prime that gives you a big letter C. And we have your HR double prime, so H preceded the R with a double prime, so maliit ang ating letter E. Okay, that's how you convert your okay, your winer to your fascia and race. So just need to memorize na lang kung paano ang designation natin. Okay, the next nomenclature we have here your Rosenfield. Again, the third nomenclature here, Rosenfield, do not indicate or denote here the, or this one do not have a genetic basis. So it just have denote here the presence or the absence of your RH antigen. So, they are also being given here number classification according to uh, the date they are being discovered for your the RH antigens. Like this one. This alphanumeric because RH, the alpha, semicolon, and the number. Parang ganun. RH, semicolon, and the number designation. Kaya alphanumeric terminology. So, itong designation natin. RH1, okay, that's your... Okay, capital letter D. Okay, this is positive. So, what if, for example, ang RH1 mo is negative? Pag negative ito, the small letter D. Kasi dapat ito, in-assume natin, we are expecting na ang RH1 mo ay malaking letter D. Kung negative ito, so mean to say your letter D is small letter. Another one, RH2. RH2 natin, for things so your big letter C. Pag nag-negative siya na RH2, since dapat ang RH2 na this capital letter C since negative siya, so magiging maliit ang letter C natin. RH3 natin, so that's your capital letters E. Pag nag-negative ito, so itong magiging designation na small letter E. Okay, RH4. Okay, pertains to your small letter C. So pag nag-negative 4 ka, so dapat, okay, that pertains to your big letter C. RH5, the small letter E. Pag nag-negative ang RH5 natin, that's your big letter E. Okay, example, we have RH, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. How are we going to convert that one with your Rosenfield? Okay, negative 1, so this is negative 1, so that's your D. Namaliit. Okay, positive number, positive 2 for your 2 plus, for your 2, so this ito siya. Okay, so mean to say that's your big letter C. For number 3, so positive pa din siya, so big letter E. Number 4, 
Number 4 natin, so the small letter C. Number 5, it's negative number 5. So, ano pag negative number 5? So, that's your capital letter E. Okay? You could convert your fission rays to your Rosen field. So, notice here that, ang nakalagay lang dito sa Rosen field natin, there are only 5, di ba? RH1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But for the fission rays, there are 6. Di ba? Like this one, itong designation ng ating uh, fission rays. Isang set nito na DCE, isang set na DCE. Paano natin, paano i-designate ang ating mga RH antigen here if we are just having only 5 na designation? So, the first letter here pertains to your RH number 1, the second here for number 2, number 3 ito, ang ito nga D, okay, so never mind this one. This is your number 4 na ulit and number 5. So, in this case, Okay, so let RH, pag kinonvert natin yung fission rate, so your Rosen field, okay, big letter D, ano ulit ng big letter D, that's your positive 1, or pag, you don't need to, to put on positive pag, ano siya, pag, uh, okay, pag positive na lang. So, wala tayong number na positive. Pero pag negative, you need to indicate talaga kung negative siya. Kung walang positive na sign or negative sign, it's understandable that one is already positive. Okay, next one, the small letter C. So, number 2 ito, RH2. Ano ulit ang RH2 pag maliit ang naong letter C? This so, maliit, this, this one give you a negative 2. Okay, this one, number 3. RH3 na this big letter E. Okay, so that's your 3 plus, plus 3. Then we have your number 4 mo na RH is capital letter C. Dapat ang number 4 natin ay maliit na letter C, di ba? This malaki ito, that gives you a negative 4. Sorry, this one is negative 4. Okay, number 5. Okay, mal malaki ang letter E natin dito. Number 5 mo dapat maliit ang letter E. Since malaki siya, okay, that gives you a negative 5 then. That is signation. Okay, so hopefully na, okay, you were able to catch up with that. So, just have to practice it one. Anyway, my state work tayo for this. Okay, then we have here the advantage of your Rosenfield. Since the Rosenfield nomenclature try to designate your RH antigen to different numbers, it's easy for you to encode that one. If your blood banking try to have here the computer system, in order for you then to assign for each of the uh, RH antigen of the blood type of the patient. So, since number lang siya, madali siya encode, encode sa ating computer. Next, we have the ISBT classification number or the International Society of Blood Transfusion. Again, this is an international organization which try to assign numbers with your uh, different blood groups. So, the ISBT classification number for the RH, okay, your ISBT classification number is a six-digit number actually. The first three digits pertains here to the ISBT classification number assigned to each of the blood group. Like in the case of your RH, so 003, lahat ng mga RH natin. And the last three digits would represent here the specific na uh, number to each of the RH antigens. So just like your, but then again this one, just like your Rosenfield, this one do not also uh, denote here or do not have a genetic basis for their classification. So numbering lang. Okay, and your Rosenfield, again, would just denote here only the presence or the absence of the antigen. Wala din siyang genetic basis. Okay, just like your Rosenfield, the ISBT classification number is also uh, easy for you then to encode uh, in your computer kasi number lang din siya. Okay, then we have here the contrasting fission rates and Weiner na theory. So again, believing here that fission rates believe or let na there are two closely related genes that is possible here for the expression of your RH antigens. So, dapat meron ka daw RH gene para makapag-produce ka ng B antigen. And dapat meron kang RH C, E na genes. We try to code here for the production of our C and the E na antigens. That's according to Fisher and Reis. Why not, on the other hand, believe here that there are only one RH gene which try to control the production of your RH agglutinogen and eventually giving rise to your RH factors, and each of that give rise to your RH antigens. 
And then we have here the inheritance of our RH antigen. So in order for you to express your RH antigen, then you need to inherit here the Lawang gene, which try to be encoded in a chromosome. So the first one, dapat, you need to inherit here the gene for the RH, RHD, and RHCE, and that to be found here in chromosome number one. In order for you to have your RH antigen, pag positive or negative ka. On the other hand, you should also inherit here another gene, RHAG. That's your associated glycoprotein. In order for you to express okay, the RH antigens. This one is encoded in chromosome number 6. What's the importance of your RH associated glycoproteins? So sabi, para maging positive ka or you were able to express the RH antigens na DCE, kailangan mo muna dapat magkaroon ito. Okay, pag wala ka nito, even na meron ka nito mga genes na to, hindi ka pa din magpapositive. You will not able to express pa din ang mga RH antigen natin. So therefore, you need this one in order for you to express your RH antigens. So they are closely related to one another. Okay, another one in the PowerPoint, there's a table there about the different phenotype related to your RH as to their number of their D antigens. Ang phenotype na may pinakamadaming D antigen is this one. Okay, we have your double deletion. Since mag-isa lang siya na antigen, so, okay, wala kang C, wala kang E din. So, therefore, you are expecting that one to have here the highest D antigen uh, expression or D antigen antigenic site na tinatawag. Okay, then we have here your immunogenicity of different RH antigens. So, that's so what we have discussed, your RH antigens is the most immunogenic after your ABO blood group system. So, napaka-immunogenic siya. Kasi having immunogenic, there will be incompatibility between the donor recipient as to their RH blood group system. It will result here to hemolytic transfusion reaction. Okay, so itong pinaka-immunogenic, the bigger D, followed by the smaller C, followed by the bigger E, followed by bigger C, big C, and Ang pinakalis immunogenic is your smaller teeth.